Hello everyone, Sula here with Chapter 3 of Sula's Complete Video Guide to Becoming an Amateur Astronomer. In Chapter 1, I introduced myself. In Chapter 2, I went over assessing your access to the night sky, provided a little bit of basic astronomy, and talked about getting started. And in this Chapter 3, I'm going to go into my methodology I'm going to provide a binocular buying guide for astronomy, and I'm going to go into the night sky a little bit more in depth. For my methodology, my methodology is number one, assess your access to the night sky, how difficult is it, and whether you have the commitment to make to get out there. It is an outdoor nature hobby, so you need to be able to get out there and look at the night sky. Number two, studying the night sky with the unaided eye and learning the major stars and major constellations, and then getting a pair of binoculars or using a pair you already own, and looking at some objects in the sky with your binoculars. And after that, if you're still into it, then you should consider getting a telescope, and in that chapter I'll discuss the different kinds of telescopes and things to consider and provide my recommendations for telescopes. And after that, the next chapter will be setting up and using your telescope. And that will probably take a few chapters because there are a lot of things to consider. After that, we will talk about logging your observations in a log book, very important, sketching your observations is a good thing to do, and then and only then will we get to astrophotography. So in this chapter, I'm going to provide you Sula's Binocular Buying Guide for Astronomy. There are two kinds of binoculars. There are poro prism that have an N-shaped light path and roof prism like these where there's a straight through light path. Poro prism tend to be bulkier and heavier and I don't use them generally, I use roof prism. So a few things to consider when looking at binoculars are the numbers which I touched on earlier. The first number is the magnification and the second number is the aperture of each lens. So these are 10 by 42, so 10 time magnification, 42 millimeter aperture for each lens. A good size for astronomy binoculars are 8 by 42, 10 by 42, 10 by 50, 7 by 56, 10 by 56. You can go all the way up to 15 by 70. But a uh, thing to consider with binoculars are not only the magnification, but the weight, because the bigger they are, they're going to weigh more generally. And when you hold binoculars up to the sky, you're going to notice your hand shake the bigger the magnification and the heavier they are. And you're going to uh, get your arms will get tired. So you need to look not only at the numbers, but the weight of the binoculars, and also you need to check the field of view. Generally, the field of view of binoculars is around five or six degrees, and that gives you a nice big circle of the sky to help you locate objects, and you also need to check something that's rarely mentioned on internet reviews, and that is the pupillary distance. The pupillary distance is the distance between each of your pupils. And if you go to the ophthalmologist, they'll ask you your pupillary distance or they'll measure it for you. And the reason you need to know that is that binoculars have a hinge. They open up and they close. And if the lowest pupillary distance is not small enough, you're not going to be able to see through both of the lenses, rendering the binoculars useless. Internet reviews of binoculars rarely mention this statistic, probably because women tend to have smaller pupillary distances and this field tends to be dominated by men. But 
when you're looking for a pair of binoculars, try to find that statistic, measure your pupillary distance, and make sure that your binoculars have a small enough minimum pupillary distance for your eyes. Price range for astronomy binoculars are anywhere from very cheap, $70, all the way up to $2,000. You don't really need anything that expensive. Birders tend to get very expensive binoculars because birders' tools are, number one, the binoculars and maybe a spotting scope, but primarily binoculars. So these are very high-end Leica, and these were about $1,500, I think. Other high-end binoculars are Swarovski and Zeiss, and those are very nice binoculars. They have excellent optics and they will last you a lifetime, but you don't need to go crazy when buying binoculars for astronomy because if you like it, you're probably going to end up getting a telescope later and that's where your major investment will be. But those are very nice binoculars and I personally think Leica is the best, but that's just my personal opinion. There's another brand that's very expensive that I never use. They're made here in the United States out of glass made in Japan, and those are Maven. They're marketed to hunters, and here in Montana, there are a lot of hunters, and they tend to use them, but they're very expensive. The 8x42 are $950, and the 10x56, I think was the size, those are $1,400, so very expensive. So if you want a nice, pair of binoculars with incredible optics that won't have any fringing on the edges and won't have any false colors, then those are the top end binoculars. But on the lower end, you can go all the way down to a cheap pair of Celestron Skymaster, the 15 by 70, which I own. I think it was $70. I uh, bought it at REI and um, they are, have a lot of false color, uh, it's called chromatic aberration, and that uh, means that the object you're looking at will have some color on the fringes, and they're pretty cheap, but uh, if you have a budget, they're, they're not bad, and they're pretty light for 15 by 70, and they give a good field of view. Going up from that, I would highly recommend the Nikon Monarch. These are about, mm, I think, $300. These are 8x42, and they have a 6.3 degree field of view, which is really good, and they're light. And the optics are, you know, they're not like Leica or Zeiss or anything like that or Swarovski, but they're not bad. And um, you don't have to worry so much about low light performance because you're going to be outside in the dark. Uh, and so I would highly recommend the Nikon Monarch for mid-range price. They're, these are a good pair of binoculars. And the lowest pupillary distance is good for women. Other binoculars in this range would be the Leupold BX series. Those are a little more. I think they're about 400. And the Vortex Crossfire and Vortex Diamondback. But be careful with Vortex because they have very bad minimum pupillary distance. I have used them and I wasn't able to push them in close enough to be able to see through both. And so try to find that statistic if you're going to get a pair of Vortex. I think the loop, Leupold, which I've tried, are very nice and they're in that price range. I think they're about $500. If you want to get a bigger binocular, some people just only use binoculars. Uh, I would, if you're on a budget, recommend the Skymaster made by Celestron. They make a more expensive one. The Skymaster 8x56, I think is about $250. I've never tried it, but um, it's gotten good reviews. Another good binocular in the 15x70 size are these Orion Resolux. These are very nice binoculars. One thing I don't like about it, and something you should consider, is the ease of turning the focus wheel. These, each eyepiece has a separate focuser. Um, but other than that, the optics are really good, and 
they're a little heavy so when you get to that size you might have to put it on a tripod but these are really good binoculars I think they were three hundred and fifty dollars I have these binoculars on this parallelogram which is really nice because you can sit in the chair and use them and you can also turn it up to the zenith and it swivels around and it makes it really nice but it's a little bit bulky and uh, a little difficult to move around but another thing that you probably will want to do with your binoculars is get an adapter that looks like this sometimes they come with an adapter I think this Celestron Skymaster comes with this adapter and you screw it in right here and then you attach it to a tripod and then that makes you able to have the binocular steady and not have handshake so you would just put your adapter here and then screw it in here and then you make it easier and you can even sit in a chair to do that and that way you can get really comfortable just sit in your chair like this and put your binoculars here and you can even tip the tripod back and then it's very comfortable for observing the night sky for a prolonged period which you're going to want to do when you start seeing how many great things there are to see even in a pair of binoculars now moving on to the next subject